What is up, friends? It's Kenyon, and welcome to Evolution Ave, home of Real Estate Evolved and the Limitless Mindset. Now, today's episode is going to be about the wealth quadrant. Yes, the wealth quadrant. Everybody wants to be wealthy, but you know you need four things to truly build wealth. As always, if you love the content, please like, subscribe, and share. And without further ado, let's get into the episode. What's up, friends, and welcome to the episode. This is the Wealth Quadrant episode, episode seven. Welcome to the podcast. I really appreciate everybody that's tuning in. Sorry it's been a while, but like I said in my video that I posted on my social media, I had a lot going on. I was traveling, I had a sore throat, but I'm back and I'm here and I'm happy that you're here. So here I am, I'm watching the NFL draft tonight and look, it's amazing. You're seeing so many dreams come true. You're seeing these young men walk across stage and this is what they work so hard for. And a lot of us, we look at these young men and we say, wow, at this moment, that man is wealthy. The truth is he's not wealthy. He's probably on a path to getting rich, but he's not wealthy. And there's a difference because wealth requires four things. Wealth requires duplication. Wealth requires uh, equity ownership. Wealth requires passive residual income. And the fourth thing that wealth requires is multiple streams of income. So when you look at players, players are playing the game and they're rich, but the owners are wealthy. The owners own every aspect of the game, no matter how you look at it. Think about this. Owners have general managers, they have coaches, they have all these people at the fields, at the facilities that are duplicating the leadership capabilities of the owner. So whether or not the owner ever steps foot on the field, whether or not they ever visit the facility, guess what? They're still being duplicated. They're duplicating their efforts. Some of these owners have never played football in their life. Some of these owners are highly successful business owners, billionaires, trillionaires, multimillionaires, whatever, but they are able to duplicate their ability to own and to lead, and that's what they do. Equity ownership. Owners have equity ownership because they own a team. Quite, It's quite simple, actually. They own a team. They own every aspect of it. Owners have passive residual income because guess what? Every single year, players are going to play. Every single year, fans are going to buy tickets. Every single year, there's going to be a draft and new players are coming to play. So guess what? No matter what, Every single year, there's going to be money coming in from games, from players, from marketing. It's just the same residual income year after year that the NFL makes. Then think about the multiple streams of income that an owner makes. So, okay, he's not only making money from ticket sales. He's making money from marketing. He's making money from sponsorships. He's making money from endorsements. He's making money from other companies that want to be on his field. Owners have multiple streams of income. So this is why players are playing and they are getting rich. Owners own the teams. They meet all four quadrants of wealth. And this is why they are the wealthy ones. So most people, when I ask them, why do they get into real estate? They say, I want to become a real estate agent because I want to become wealthy. Well, just like the game of football, a lot of real estate agents or quite a bit are rich, but there's not a lot of wealthy real estate agents. And how many real estate agents are actually in a position to build wealth? See, most brokerages are set up in a way that you only make money one way, and that's by transacting real estate. And once you stop transacting, the money stops. So if you go away for a month on a vacation, then that can represent a big hit in your income because you're not transacting during that month. Now, these days, most brokerages do allow teams, which in a sense is duplication. However, the brokerages that aren't embracing teams, well, I don't think we'll see them around that much in the future because if you're not learning how to scale and leverage, which is a major key to wealth, then you're probably not really going to truly gain wealth. Not to mention, at some point, adding leverage and scale to your business is the best way for you to maintain your sanity. 
Very few brokerages have any type of equity ownership. So basically, you never own the brokerage. You pretty much just work and you're continuing to trade your time for money. Speaking of time for money, very few brokerages have any type of passive income opportunity or any type of residual income opportunity. So essentially what that means is once you stop transacting, guess what? You're just continuing to do the same thing over and over again, which is trade your time for money. And don't get me wrong, in the beginning of your real estate career, you do have to trade your time for money. In the beginning of any business, you have to trade your time for money because you have to build it. But at some point, you want to be able to step away from the business and still maintain your lifestyle, still maintain your income or even a higher level of income because you were able to scale and you were able to create multiple streams of income. Speaking of multiple streams of income, very few brokerages offer a model that has multiple streams of income. Multiple streams of income should be you're transacting real estate, you have some type of reoccurring revenue through a revenue share model, and you have stock incentives that are paying you for and rewarding you for doing different things and helping agents and being successful. See, if you're at a brokerage like EXP, you're hitting all four quadrants of the wealth quadrant. So you are able to achieve all four things to truly build wealth. And this is what makes a place truly agent centric. This is what truly creates a wealth building environment. See, I can tell you from experience that most brokerages, because I was on the leadership councils, I've been very privy to a lot of information. Most brokerages care more about their agent count quotas, care more about collecting uh, their monthly office fees, and they have these recruiters disguised as team leaders and agent, business development, whatever you want to call them. And that tells you what the proof is. The proof is they care about the numbers. And when I tell you they care about the numbers, they're not caring about the numbers that really matter to you, the numbers they're going to hit the four quadrants of wealth, the numbers that are going to help you truly build wealth. If someone is not invested in you, and especially they're not going to be invested in you because what they're invested in is what you can do for them. That's what most of the normal traditional brokerages are interested in. And when you're no longer doing something for them, and maybe you make a decision to go somewhere that's a better model that helps you truly build wealth, guess what? A lot of these places, you're not their friend anymore. They don't care about you. You're not important to them because you chose to do something that's more important for you, that's best for you, but it's not best for them anymore. So that's not a true wealth building environment. And you're also not working with people who are truly invested in you as an agent, as a person, and as someone who is looking to truly build wealth. If you're looking to build wealth as a real estate agent, we should definitely talk more. Feel free to reach out. Let's schedule a one-on-one. -on -one. I'll be happy to walk you through the wealth quadrant in deeper detail. As always, if you love the content, please like, subscribe, and share. I always appreciate you tuning in. You know I believe that your vibe attracts your tribe, and you are definitely my tribe. So with that said, I want you to have a great day. Go out there and crush it, and y'all stay super blessed.